you're aware of data tables in Excel, you'll know that it's possible to create a two-way data table for a particular model. So in this very simple example, I've got a principal amount, the term and the interest rate, and, and I want to work out the repayment amount. The data table shows me what the combination of principal and interest rate will be. So at any point here I can look and assess what the repayment will be given a certain principal and a certain interest rate. But what happens if you want to create a three-way data table or a four or five-way data table? So for example I want to compare these principal amounts with these terms with these interest rates. This cannot be done in the normal data table way you basically have to trick Excel into doing it. In order to create a three-way data table, you actually have to forget about the two-way data table and go back to a one-way data table. The setup is quite important, so you'll see we've got the same information, but I've created another area here. What I've done, I've called, given it a scenario number and I've created 1 to 27 and you'll see why just now. I've then got a space and I've linked my answer into our answer cell. This is very important. What I've done is I've created a matrix of combinations. So you'll notice that the first one shows the principal, the term and the interest rate. The second one, the first two are the same, only that one changes. So what it's doing is going through and creating every possible combination of these three variables and their three different options. Hence the 27 scenarios which is 3 times 3 times 3. Once that is set up, you need to actually set up so that your input cells, in this case I'm using a VLOOKUP, and I've created a little scenario button here. What this is going to do is the data table is actually going to run through these scenarios and depending on what scenario you've chosen, the VLOOKUP is now going, looking at the scenario and pulling through the relevant variable in that sensitivity. Now to create the data table we do the normal thing. You'll see I only highlight the scenarios and our payment column. These are just useful for the calculations up here. Go to data, what if analysis, data table. I go to the column input cell and I tell it to look here. When I click enter, you'll see it runs through and creates these answers. If you look closely now, what this has done is for every scenario which nation of these items it has given us an answer. So for the first one those options have given us 836 which is the same as this number here. The next one the only thing that changes is the percentage from 8 to 10 this answer. And so it goes through and every possible con combination is addressed. The problem now is how to present this information. The two-way data table is a simple matrix, reasonably easy to present. Here we've now got three variables, and you can see it can be a little bit confusing to look at. So one way of doing it, you might just put a data filter on. As you can see now, you can decide what are all the results for, for example, principal of 100,000, and here's all the possible results with the various combination of terms and interest. However, this is not the nicest way, and the way that we think is best is by using a pivot table. For a pivot table, what we can do is highlight this whole area. In this case, we include the scenario number, the data table, and these inputs. That's why they've been put in this order. We go insert, and we create a pivot table. We're happy with that. And I'm going to go and put it into the existing worksheet. And we'll just put it here at the bottom. 
I'm going to say OK. We're now almost ready to start. OK, so let's create a simple pivot quickly. I'm going to take the principal, let's put it across the top, the term down the side, and interest rate over here. I prefer to do this in a table layout. So we'll just go to tabular and show it there. In this case, we don't need these subtotals. Okay, so what you can see is I've now got a bit of a matrix set up. The term is here. Don't worry about these noughts, we'll remove them just now. So you can see that we've got the ability to show 180 months at 8, 10, and 12% for principal of zero. Don't worry about that. 100,000, 105, 110. Let's get our answer in. I'm going to pull the payment in. We've got that. I'm just going to quickly format it so it looks a little bit better. Okay. Now, because of the way we've had to set up data tables over here, what we need to do is it's going to always bring through this row here. So we're just going to remove that. I can go to any one of them, just switch off the zero. So what I've got now is a comprehensive data table. Again, it can look a little bit complex, but watch what we can do when we add some conditional formatting in. Set it up like that. We'll do a three color scale. In this case, go like that. In this case, we don't really need the grand total either. Okay, so what we've got here is a view that we can quickly see where the worst number is, the dark reds, and where the best numbers are. So with one view, I know that it would be a bad idea to take a 180 month loan at 12% if it's 110,000 rand. The best would be at 8%, 180 months, 100,000. But in fact, the darkest green is over here. The benefit of a pivot table is if this doesn't quite work the way we want to, let's try and move this around. I'm going to take the interest rate before the term. Okay, we just have to remove some of these subtotals. Just put the conditional formatting back on. Okay, so that looks a little bit better. You can see that all the darker reds are congregated over here, so it looks like interest rate has a big bearing to play. But what's nice now is it's relatively easy to drag these things around and to find the one that provides the best view. So looking here, I believe it's relatively easy to see that's the best we can do, that's the worst, and simply by looking at what the headings are, you can tell what combination of inputs achieve that. To perhaps make it a little bit easier to use in Excel 2010, what we may do is just repeat the item labels so that we can at any stage look up or across to see what the combination of inputs are. We can use the same technique to create a four-way data table. So here, same example, I've just included a future value or bullet payment in the calculation. Again, we just need to set this up. Now, because you've got four variables with three options in each, you'll see we now need 81 scenarios. But this has been all set up. And we've created the pivot already. And if you look here, we have a pivot table, conditional formatting put on. We've done a bit of sorting just to make the variables make the most sense. And you can immediately see that here's the cheapest, dark green. And just by looking at the intersection, you can see that this is with a bullet payment of 40,000, 8% interest rate, which is the lowest, a term of 240, which is the longest, and a principal amount or present value of 80,000, which is the lowest. 
So you can now look at the combination of results and see where you are comfortable playing and what combinations actually allow for that.